Did you know that it's Carnivale? I sure didn't, because I'm an American who doesn't live in New Orleans. But a lot of people around the world are celebrating. For many Italians, Carnivale means it's time to eat meatballs. So today we're gonna talk all about meatballs and cover everything you need to know to make, cook, and eat the best Italian meatballs possible. We should quickly cover where meatballs come from. Meatballs seem to be one of those universal things. They're all over the world. Every culture has its own meatball. They seem to have first come from Persia. That's where the ancient Romans found them. They were over there fighting and conquering and eating meatballs. The ancient Roman gastronomer Apicius actually wrote the first uh, Italian meatball recipe that we know about. His were a little bit different. They were wrapped in um, call, pork call, which is this weird um, stomach webbing netting stuff. We actually made similar meatballs in this video. You can see how those were made. In the 15th century, the culinary expert Maestro Martino was the first person to call meatballs polpette, which is what meatballs are called in Italy. The first thing that we need to understand is which meat we use for our meatballs. Today I'm going to use half beef and half pork. But this is my own choice because actually people, they can use, uh, for example, more pork and less beef, or they can mix uh, pork and veal, or they can do just beef, just veal. So the combination of the meat is a little bit up to you. For example, Mama Rosa, she used pork. That's it. After we choose the the meat, after we have our meat, is the time of the other very important ingredient for a very good meatball, which means bread. There are people who, th who think that they need to use breadcrumb, but if they use the very dry breadcrumbs, they end up having a very dry meatball. So personally, I don't really suggest to use bread. The bread that you should use to make your meatball is a bread that it was baked three four days ago. It's still a little bit soft bread, but not fresh like it was cooked in the morning. You can just crumble the, how do you say, Arper Mollica? Like the, the insides, everything but the crust? See, everything but the crust of your bread. There isn't a precise amount of bread that you should use for your meatball because the quantity depends on the final mix. Right now I'm using this, I'm starting with this, and think that there is always time to add more if you need. The next ingredient is eggs. As for the bread crumb, we don't really know how much egg we need until the final mix. So I'm starting with two, but I have always this if I need it later. When it comes to herbs and spices, uh, for example, I really like parsley and uh, black pepper. Then there are people who had, for example, also some uh, very fine chopped garlic. Some people had nutmeg. If you wanted to, could you add some pepperoncino? A spicy meatball. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. I had the pepperoncino later when I cooked the meatball, not in the mix of meat. Like most of Italian food, we season to taste. Okay, hold up. I know what you're thinking. How can you season to taste something you can't taste, like raw meat? This is where the genius of the Italian's use of cheese comes in. If you've watched many of our videos before, you've probably seen Ava do this. She'll be mixing something, and yes, she'll add some salt, maybe some pepper, and then a whole bunch of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Or pecorino. Or pecorino, sorry. Or both. Or both. The reason this is genius is because, okay, if you add Parmigiano or Pecorino, it's naturally salty, so you're adding salt into the dish, you're adding flavor and seasoning, but it's literally impossible to over-salt the meatballs. Think about it, even if you add just an insane amount of cheese, the worst thing that can possibly happen is your meatballs will taste more cheesy, too cheesy. I don't know if there's such a thing as too cheesy. You can add as much cheese as you want, but the meatballs will never be too salty. While I'm mixing my meatball, I feel that they are a little bit too dry. They are too, do you say, firm. So I think that I'm going to add another egg. 
adding the extra egg uh, makes the meatball dough a little bit more uh, soft but it's not too soft that they when we are going to cook them they will disappear so it's the right consistency per sapere quanto ce ne vuole ci affidiamo al nostro sentimento and now we get to the fun part which means making the meat you take some meat you roll the meat into a bowl and you have your meat this is the most basic meatball but then i'm going to show you some other kind in order to make this other kind of meatball we start with a normal meatball but then we fl 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 flat flatten flatten it we'll explain in a meatball in a meatball. We'll explain in a minute why the flat meatballs. You can also stuff your meatball and actually you can put inside more or less whatever you want. Today I'm going to stuff my meatball with some ham and mozzarella. So you take a small amount of meat, flatten a little bit, put a piece of ham, one or two pieces of mozzarella, then you take some extra meat, you cover. Pay attention to really close your meatball very, very well because otherwise when we are going to cook them, all of the stuffing will just leak in our pan or pot. And last but not least, we need to make our tiny meatballs that they are made like the normal meatball but just a little bit smaller now that we have a whole bunch of meatballs it's time to cook them in general there are three most common ways to cook meatballs and we're going to start with the most uh the most decadent One of the ways in which we cook these uh, tiny meatballs are uh, frying them. Uh, so after they are fried, we can use them uh, in a lasagna, in a timpano, uh, pasta al forno. They can be a good uh, stuffing. Now, if you want, you can use a thermometer and measure the temperature of your oil and get it to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 150 degrees Celsius. However, I've never seen Ava or any Italian nonna use a thermometer when frying. Instead, they get the oil hot and then they just drop in, it can be a little meatball or a breadcrumb, kind of anything that you're kind of already frying. If you drop it in and it starts to bubble and fry right away, the oil's hot enough. If it sort of sits at the bottom and doesn't really do much, the oil needs more time to heat up. Conversely, turn down your heat if when you add your food in, it starts bubbling over out of the pot, and definitely if the oil starts to smoke. How do you know when fried meatballs are done? When they are uh, crunchy, they seem crunchy outside because you're sure that they will be soft inside. These uh, flattened meatballs, uh, they are meant to be fried. This is the only way in which you can eat them, just fry them. You know, I've actually never had a stuffed meatball before. Never, Alper. Do you like your first meatball, stuffed meatball? I'm a little upset you've never made these for me before. If you don't want to fry your meatball, what you can do is cook them in bianco. Once the meatball they are completely brown, we can add some white wine. Mm -hmm. 
after the meatball are cooking, cover it for about 20 minutes to make them cook inside. We take out the lid and just reduce the sauce and then they are ready. There is no doubt that the most classical way to cook your meatball is in tomato sauce. my basic simple tomato sauce but this time is very important to add some water because we need the extra time to cook the meatball Let them simmer until the sauce is reduced and the meatballs are cooked. The meatballs are made, but how to eat them? Okay, the fried meatballs I've always seen in Italy served kind of like an appetizer. Maybe before a big feast, they'll be out on a plate and people will just grab one with a napkin, snack on them. So the flattened meatballs are great fried because by doing so, you increase the precious surface area that gets fried. So you get more fried, crispy goodness on the outside. And still super juicy on the inside. Mm. Meatballs can also be eaten as their own independent second course, just like any other meat dish. If you are a rosemary fanatic like I am, you have to try meatballs in Bianco. Yeah, that's the way to do it. I know, Arbor. <laughs> They're so good. They're so good. La polpetta in bianco, it's a must. One of my favorite ways to eat meatballs is kind of like the Italian version of a meatball sub. Italians will sometimes spread a meatball on a piece of bread. I really like this because you get all of the deliciousness of a meatball sub, but with the convenient form factor of a bruschetta. You want some? Eh, uh, maybe yes, Arthur. Okay, hang on. Easy. Maybe my favorite way of eating meatballs. With the exception of spaghetti alla terramana, that dish uses a fresh egg spaghetti and tiny little meatballs, which we made in this video, you can check it out. You will be very hard pressed to find meatballs atop a plate of spaghetti in Italy. Note, I said spaghetti, not pasta. Fresh egg pasta and meat go together so well. Hearty pasta, hearty sauce. If you've never tried it, you have to give it a shot.
is a tagliatelle with meatball Italian style, the real deal. Now Harper, the photo was amazing, very very beautiful. But now to eat the pasta we need to take out the meatball. Yeah, we should mention that um, you typically eat the pasta separate from the meatballs. They can be served together like this, it happens, but you generally eat a bite of one and then a bite of the other. Bon appetito! Amazing with the wet wine. Amazing fried, amazing stuffed. What a good art. <laughs> Meatball with tomato, tomato sauce. The pasta is so amazing too because the sauce isn't just a tomato sauce, it's a meatball flavored tomato sauce. Guys, we hope you liked this in-depth look at Italian meatballs. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and follow us on social media, at Pasta Grammar. If you try any of these recipes, tag us over there. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye.